Right, let's get more build-up then to the start of the World Cup. Let's go back out to Doha and join our senior reporter, Melissa Reddy, who's still there for us. Morning, Melissa. Look, the excitement's building. And look, you've uh, tracked down a very special guest alongside you as well. Yes, we can't talk about the World Cup without getting the insight of a man who's covered 12 of them. A whole 12, Martin Tyler. How much work goes into commentating on a tournament like this? Well, usually a lot beforehand, but obviously yeah. we've been working uh, on the Premier League right up until last weekend, so it's been a bit of a rush, actually. I worked out I've got um, 12 games in 13 days involving 19 different countries. Fortunately, two of those countries are England and Wales. OK, yes. Um, but there's a fair amount of work to go into it. And, yeah, but it's, uh, it's always a privilege to be chosen to commentate on a World Cup, rather like it is for a player to be picked to play in it. So yes. very fortunate to have got those numbers that you mentioned. OK, so 12 World Cups. Uh, and usually when you're in the World Cup atmosphere, you know what you're expecting. There's a lot of colour, a lot of noise, a lot of excitement and jubilation. We haven't really seen any of that here in Qatar yet. Has it been quite a strange experience? Well, I've been here 36 hours, but I've been to a couple of training camps and to the International Broadcast Centre, where you normally see fans gathering around and about. And that hasn't been the case. Um, I watched Qatar train yesterday, and you would expect outs not inside the, the training area where accredited journalists can go in, but outside you'd expect some noise, you know? There was nobody, literally nobody. So hopefully in the next couple of days it will build up. Um, but yes, it's different, different to most of the world. Because I just saw some Argentina fans, actually, genuine Argentina fans. So the South Americans somehow always find a way. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they're starting to come in, maybe in dribs and drabs, but they're on their way. Yeah, we were at uh, France training yesterday and there were some local kids from a French-speaking school that were there and there was a bit of noise and we were like, ooh, finally it feels like we're at a tournament. So, yeah, I think, you know, a small country, we weren't really knowing what to expect and possibly as the games kick off there might be more of a buzz around it. But in terms of the teams, who are you looking at coming here thinking they've got a really strong chance? Well, I hate doing predictions, but um, obviously, being English, I hope England have got... Um, I think it will help England coming straight from the Premier League. Yes, there's been talk of a bit of fatigue, but that's fatigue from a particular match or a series of matches. It's not... They've got their match sharpness. And after a couple of days, you recover in a week, you play again in the Premier League. They're playing again now in the World Cup. So I think that will work for England and for, obviously, players coming from other Northern European countries as well who have had similar experiences. So I think the quality of football will be very good. Um, I can't wait to see what the stadium is like with this 18 degrees um, air conditioning, you know. I mean, I feel a bit sorry for the teams that are having to train in the, in the heat of the day. And I know it's easy to be wise after the event, but surely some requests in the last four or five years could have gone in to say, let's have some training grounds where we can train in the conditions we're going to play in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's kind of a balancing act for all the coaches. And I know Wales have moved theirs a little bit, haven't yes, they, to yeah. try and get it. Yesterday I, at the Qatari training, it was five o'clock local time. Okay. I'd taken a little uh, rain top with me. And not that I need it for rain, but it was getting that chilly. So I think at the kickoff times, given the nature of the stadium and the technology, which is mind blowing when you think about it, really, to, to uh, instead of like a hotel room being air conditioned, you've got a whole football ground yeah. being air conditioned. So um, let's see, and I, that should make to a, a good level of, of tempo of football. We, we don't want to sort of so hot we've got to you know, yeah, yeah. walk through the game. So I, I'm really looking forward to the football, and I hope um, for all, I know there's another conversation about being here in Qatar but for the football itself let's hope it's a great World Cup and um, a lot of hard work's gone into it um, the people here have been really friendly and open to us and what they don't have is any great knowledge of the of the product really yeah and e the culture around football, yeah. Really. yeah and even even all the um, the new things that they brought in like the metros relatively new to try and find, I tried to duck my way through changing the station, am I on the right line for this? And nobody really knew, and I think that's because it is very fresh in their lives yeah. as well. So yeah. we have to take that into account. Mm. I want to know the exact spot you were standing at and the exact time when you felt chilly because I definitely <laughs> want to feel chilly in Qatar. That hasn't yeah, happened you're, yet. You're a quarter of my age, so you're <laughs> all right. <laughs> Listen, you were speaking there about... Um, England and you know hopefully them having a good tournament mm. and actually
actually some of the USA players who are based out in England made the point you did about they feel like they're already conditioned for a World yeah, Cup because yeah. they've had it's new. an it's, intense it's, it's season. It's never yeah. been like this before, really. Yeah. And we've had winter World Cups, but in the Southern Hemisphere, in mm. Brazil and South Africa, yeah, country yeah. you know very well. <laughs> um, that was very, very chilly. Um, but in the, um, uh, to be honest with you, uh, th th there was that break and the, the long European season. So uh, it was tough for the, the mm. Premier League players, whatever country they play for. Um, but I, th I do feel that they're ready to go. Actually, my last Premier League commentary for Sky was um, Fulham against Manchester United. Manchester United, as you know, won in dramatic circumstances right here. Yeah. And the message we got straight away is, we want to play another Premier League game straight away because we're on such a high from yeah. this. Well, yeah. they're going to play. A lot of them are going to play again, but they're going to play for their countries. And I'm sure they'll take that ebullience and mood into what they do out here. Just to drill into England, what do you think will be the elements that could have them be successful here or continue that trend that we've seen in it, it seems a bit of an odd thing to say for a country's not won in six games <laughs> but I do think England have got scoring power and yes they might have to score one or two more defensively there are problems aren't there yeah. um, not just lack of form uh, lack of playing time lack of injuries so I think they might have to score one or two more goals than possibly uh, in previous tournaments you know but I think they can do that um, I do think there's an energy about the attacking play I know Gareth has a bit of a label as a defensive coach, but I think he'll be uh, letting the shackles come off as much as he believes that can happen. So I, th I think if, if they're firing and they have Harry Kane fit and firing throughout the tournament and he brings the others with him, you know, and you look as a commentator, where are the goals going to come from any team you do? Are they going to... I mean, I, I did Fulham without Mitrovic, so it was very hard to think, and they didn't um, really um, attack with any great threat. They did get a goal. Um, but So you're looking at... England saying, yeah, well, the defenders can score. You know, John Stone scored a couple of goals in a yeah, World Cup game yeah. four years ago. Uh, Harry Maguire scored seven international goals, I think. Um, maybe Declan, he always talks about not scoring uh, as much. I don't know in that interview where we've just shown, but he'd like to get more goals. So he's, it's in his mindset about getting goals. Mason Mount can get goals. Raheem's got 19 international goals, something like that. So I think that's, if England are going to do it, I don't think it's going to be 1 0 to England all the way through the tournament. Spain won it in uh, South Africa, seven games, eight goals, yeah. and they won the World Cup. So I don't think England can do it like that but they still can do it. Well, will we see an unshackled England? Will we see fans? Will we get some sort of atmosphere? You can stay tuned to Sky Sports News to find out. Fantastic. Great to speak to you both. Many thanks.